In this video, I'm investigating brands, which really means finding brands from a supplier to sell on Amazon. Now, this is part of the product research process for Amazon Arbitrage Sellers, which is a series of videos I put together, and you can find links to those videos in the description of this video. So now to jump right into it, the main thing I'm going to look at here is what makes a good brand, and what I mean is what makes a good brand from a supplier to sell on Amazon. So in this case, I'm using the supplier Vitacost. And uh, Vitacost is a supplier that I've explored before, and they have a private brand, which is called Vitacost as well. But in this case, what I want to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page and find their shop by brand link. Some suppliers don't have one, and you will have to Google the name of that supplier and then uh, the word brands. In this case, they have it linked at the bottom of the page. And now... First of all, I do want to point out that there's a very large number of brands, as is normally the case with most suppliers. We can see that these brands have been separated from A to Z, and I mean, there are a ton of brands in there. I mean, a very large number of brands. But I also see that these particular brands have been separated somehow. Maybe these are like their most uh, famous brands that are featured. Uh, they are not private brands. The only brand here that is a private brand of the supplier is Vitacost itself. These other brands are not private. Now, I've already actually looked at some of these brands, and what I do is when I look at these brands, I make records on it, and I keep an Amazon research template. This is the one that I use for my demo videos. You can get a, a free copy of this Google Sheet in the link uh, in the description of this video. And this is just to help organize the process. So first of all, I have a supplier sheet where I do have the name of the supplier, Vitacost, and that should be in here, their shipping return policy. But now... On the brand sheet, uh, these are some Vitacost brand, uh, brands that I got from Vitacost. And I'm going to start with Garden of Life. And I uh, did detect that Garden of Life, Now, Bob's Red Mill, Nature's Way, that these different brands um, have some IP issues. Um, but I did not detect any such IP issues with uh, I think it was Frontier, right? So, but what I'm going to do, first of all, is look at what actually makes a good brand and investigate some of those other brands uh, that we haven't done, that I haven't done yet. Now, first of all, you want to find a large number of products on Amazon. So you want the brand itself to have a lot of products on Amazon, right? And um, basically... It's going to be easy for us to tell that, right? So I'm going to look at a brand. Uh, let's look at Nature's Plus. And simply on catalog ad products on uh, Amazon Seller Central, you will just type in the name of that brand or copy and paste it. And I do see Nature's Plus. And really what I'm looking for is to actually see the name of that brand. That brand name should be inside of the product titles. In fact, it should normally be at the beginning of the product titles, and I do see that, and I do want to see that I have approval to sell the brand, which I'll know if I have if I have approval to sell their products, then obviously I can sell the brand, right? But there might also be a category issue, meaning whether or not you have approval to sell that type of product is another question, right? A lot of these seem to be like supplements, so you need to have approval, um to sell supplements and things like that, right? Okay, um, so here's one of their products, okay? And it's a good idea to also kind of get an idea of who's selling these products. And you're going to have to look at a few of them to get an idea, right? A few different products of the brand. I do. I mean, I see just what I would call regular, regular sellers, just regular sellers on here, meaning I don't see Amazon.com. And I don't see Nature's Plus. I don't want to see Nature's Plus, the brand, selling its own brand, right? Because then I probably shouldn't be selling it alongside of them. I, and I don't want to... I, in general, it's not really a rule of thumb. It's, it's, But in general, I don't like to see Amazon selling too many products of that brand either because they tend to bring the price down very low. So really, I just want to see regular people selling it. And that is pretty much what I'm seeing for the Nature's Plus brand, as I'm seeing regular, normal sellers. All right. Now, the other thing 
um, that comes into play is when you have a Chrome extension that gives you alerts. Things like IP risk telling you, hey, this brand has been reported to file IP complaints and things like that. So I have a Chrome extension here called IP Alert that does that, but I also have the Cell Assistant app also gives you that as well. Um, both are very useful to me, and I have links for both. And I have discounts for both. You get a deal through my link automatically if you use the link for this Chrome extension, Cell Assistant app. And I have a discount code uh, that you can use for this Chrome extension, IP Alert, if you're interested in that one. Right? Um, so you can take a look at those. But obviously, you know, from looking at it, the brand seems, you know, okay. Right? I mean, it's got products. Um, seems to have a decent number of products. I can keep moving through and I can see more products are still available with that Nature's Plus on it. So this is a good thing. So it seems this brand is alright um, as far as I can tell. Right? So that's kind of like an initial test. Right? We want to look at that brand on Amazon and see that and then basically you just want to add it to this list under brands or the products on Amazon. Yes they are. Do I have approval to sell the brand IP risk? None was detected. And then you want to make a note of the supplier, of course, is Vitacost. And going back to my list, yes, large number of products on Amazon, approval to sell the brand. The brand is not a seller on Amazon. The brand is not mostly sold by Amazon. And we don't detect any IP risk. It checked off with my five good brand checklists. Okay, the five items on my good brand checklist. But there's also the supplier side, and basically all I really care about on the supplier side of the brand is that they do, in fact, have products. Because I've seen on some suppliers, I, I mean, I do a lot of investigating, uh, and there's some suppliers where the brand or a brand might have literally one product or two products of that brand, right? So we don't want to see just two products of Nature Plus, okay? But what we see instead is 434 products. So that's good. If we have 434 products here, there's more of a chance that we can find something, right? We need to have a lot of choices in arbitrage. You need a lot of choices because a lot of products are not profitable, right? Because you're buying them at a normal retail price and trying to flip them. So oftentimes they're not profitable. So you need a lot of products to choose from to start off, right? Okay, so now, so I've opened up the Nature's Plus Brands link off of Vitacost and uh, at this point I can actually explore some of their products from this direction trying to match them to Amazon or I can even try going on Amazon itself and taking a product title and reverse searching that title Right, and the title is of course one way to search for products. We can also do it by barcode, which I can show you in a moment. And I can try to see if if it'll show up at Vitacost, right? It's, it's here on Amazon. How about uh, we know that Vitacost carries that brand? Can we find it on Vitacost? Whoops, wrong link. Right, so here's a Vitacost link, not this one. Close that. And it appears that this could be the same product. Uh, Nature's Plus Ultra Cranberry 1000 milligram 60 tablets. It's $23.08 at Vitacost, and it is also $23.08 on Amazon. So they are the same price. I'm curious to see who's selling this product, and I do see that one person is shipping it from Amazon. Two people, two of the sellers are shipping it from Amazon, so I know that they're FBA sellers. This one person is shipping it. Uh, it's fulfilled by merchant. So either they might have gotten it from another supplier cheaper. That's a possibility. Right? Or maybe this price, uh, maybe they did get it from Vitacost, but maybe it was cheaper in the past. Or they're not doing arbitrage. Right? Maybe they're going right to the brand and, you know, doing it uh, wholesale. Right? So we don't really know how the other sellers are getting the product. All we know is that it's not going to be profitable if I buy it right now from Vitacost and it's because the prices are the same, right? Okay, so that's basically the process. Of course, and of course I can do the same thing starting uh, 
on Vitacross itself, I can pull up a product on Vitacross and I can do the same thing, taking the product, performing a Google search on that product, and then locating the product uh, on Amazon, potentially. Right? So here we see 30 tablets. Hemoplex, this looks quite similar. And it's only a little cheaper here than it is on Amazon, right? So here it is, though, very high sales. Okay, 1,083 pieces a month, according to Seller Assistant app. In the top 0.18% of health and household. Okay, very good BSR. Okay, but this BSR top percentage really tells you a lot. The top percent. All right, so that's the BSR compared to the total number of products in that category. So it falls in the top 0.18% of best sellers. But unfortunately, not profitable from buying it from here. And this is often what you're going to see is that products, a lot of times, a lot of times, very small BSR, you know, come from, and then found at a retailer, oftentimes is not profitable. So sometimes you can get a larger BSR, but you can get profit and you can still get some sales, right? Because the question is, do you really need to sell 1,083 pieces a month, right? So maybe you don't need a product with this kind of sales volume, all right? But maybe you just need uh, enough sales volume. So just something to think about, right? Because oftentimes you're gonna, it's, it's a little tough to find profitable products with this volume in general. Generally, I mean, I've done it, but it's it can be tough. Now, um, so. Really, we see that whether we go to Amazon and we start reverse searching from there or whether we go to the supplier and match it to Amazon, the issue is really that it's a numbers game. You have to be able to look at a lot of products in a shorter period of time. So it's not that there isn't anything profitable, but it's that there's just so many that are not profitable. And it just takes so much time to go through these manually, one by one, to go through every Nature's Plus. I mean, you know, that's just going to take like forever. So um, what I will do is I will, I'm going to attempt to use my uh, supplier Amazon matcher to help out with this. So what I need to really do is get these products into a CSV. All right, I need to get them into a spreadsheet. I need the titles, the prices, the links. And so I'm going to use the uh, Instant Data Chrome extension. And see, when I first clicked the Instant Data Scraper Chrome extension, it put the red box around the brand names, which is not what I want. I want it around the products. So I'm going to click on Try Another Table. And I now see that the red box is going around the products. Okay, that's the first thing. You want to make sure it captures the right area. So now I do see product links. And if I scroll over, I also see product titles. Um, I'm, I also see uh, prices. And I also see uh, other data as well, right? But mainly I want URLs, titles, and prices. But there's something else. I notice that there are 22 pages of results. And in fact, there are 434 products. I want to see if I can get more pages scraped. So what I'm going to do is click on the infinite scroll and click on it again. And then I get a locate next button option. At this point, I click on locate next button and I will scroll down the page. Don't click anything. Uh, I thought it would say next down here. Okay, apparently it's just an arrow. So what I'll do is actually click on the arrow, which is the next arrow, in other words. And just click on it. And that tells Instant Data Scraper that this button is the next button and then you click on start crawling and we hope that it will be able to move through the pages and scrape more than just one page and and, and it's doing it it says pages uh, two pages scraped pages scraped two three now it has scraped three pages so it's 20 pages 20 products per page and so we see that it has scraped four pages already that's a total of 80 products we can see it here rows collected rows are actually products the reason why it's so general is because this uh, Chrome extension is not actually designed for e-commerce. It's just made for websites in general, so this could be any kind of data. Right? It doesn't have to be products. It could do this for anything. In this case, the rows are actually products. Okay, So it's getting all these different products. So we have seven pages scraped, eight. And remember, we've got 20 uh, pages, I believe, or 22 pages. So it's going to take a while, so I'm going to go away and come back when it's done. So now that I've downloaded the data to a CSV, I'm over on my supplier, Amazon Google Sheet system. 
matching Google Sheet system. And what I'm going to do is find the IDS CSV tab where, where I will bring in this CSV data. I will go to File, Import, Upload, select a file from your device, and I will bring in the VitaCost CSV that I just downloaded. This number is because I've been downloading it multiple times, so you may not have that number, right? So VitaCost, and then replace current sheet, import data, and then I should see all the products. In fact, if I go control down, I can see clearly a lot of products in here, about 434 altogether. Now, what you can do is you have the columns map, okay? And uh, you normally will have to map the columns. I already did VitaCost, but for people who've never seen the system before, I'm going to just briefly review it, but I'm not really going to do it. Uh, the map, you're just finding, for instance, these are the URLs of the products. So you're going to take this top column uh, row, this uh, column heading, you copy it, and you put it under here where it says URLs, under the URLs. You do the same thing for the titles, and you do the same thing for the prices, right? These are titles and the prices, which are, I think, X1. But even if you know this process and you've done it before, even if you've already done the supplier, it's still a good idea to look at the map and look at the CSV ahead of time. Make sure that it's still the same. You never know with a website, uh, you know, or a particular page on a website, there could be a difference. I've seen it with Walmart where sometimes these change. So you do want to look at these and just make sure it's still X1 for the price. All right, make sure it's still the same. But you'll know once you, uh, you'll, you'll find out anyway when you do the import whether or not it works, all right? So once you select vitacost.com and you click Importance and Data Scraper, there should be no issues because we set up the map. The map is there. The CSV is there. We see everything lines up. There will be no issues with importing this data. You just hit Importance and Data Scraper CSV. You give it some time to pull the data. And um, you're going to pull that data right in here. Okay. We see the titles, the URL show up first, and then we see the prices. Now, I'm not going to waste any time at this point. Uh, I am going to show you quickly that if I scroll down, control down, I do see that I have uh, the 434 products that I downloaded are all in here. So you have all 434 products. And I will click, make sure, making sure that you're on this top row, you're going to go ahead and click Find All Amazon URLs, and it will begin matching these products. Now, one thing, if you've been using this spreadsheet before, that you're gonna see, that you might notice is that I have a match score, right? Uh, so this match score basically is based on the title in the Amazon URL. Comparing it, if you look at an Amazon URL, you may not have noticed, or you might have noticed, it has words in it from the title, right? So it's comparing it and telling you how similar they are as a percentage. Generally, um, and just ignore that. I'll explain that in a second. Generally, the larger this number is, the more similar the title is to the Amazon URL, the more likely you're going to find that they do match. The smaller the number is, the less likely. So it's just a way to kind of help you gravitate towards the ones that are more likely to match. Now, when you get an error, or it's not really an well, yeah, this is kind of an error. It's really because of the this particular one is the search engine saying, sorry, not right now. And then it stops, right? The other one is going to be when it's been running for a long time. You maybe after 100 products or so, or over 100, and it says, "I'm not going to do any more." And then you just restart it. So right now, I'm going to click right here and just restart it. Just click final Amazon URLs again and just restart. Now, one thing I can do is I can jump in and start trying to find uh, some matches. If you start looking in here, you'll start to see uh, some similarities between the ones that have a larger number are more likely to match but just because it has a lower number does not mean it doesn't match let's look at this one as 44 percent I do not know I haven't done this ahead of time so I don't know what I'm gonna see right now this is a uh, live in the moment results right which I think is what you know I think people appreciate seeing that um, and so I like to do that these do appear uh, yeah these really appear to be the same product. I mean, yeah, even the image, even the actual, you know, uh, the design on the actual container has not changed. The text 
everything's the same. We've got you know the title. You see how similar those titles are. Uh, so I think the only reason why the match score is not that high is probably because maybe not many they didn't use all the words in this title, so they don't show up in the URL. But as it turns out, they are a match, right? So don't use the match score to say nope, that's not a match. It's not really that simple. I'm going to show you how to how you should use it later, but. Uh, just something to keep in mind, right? The visual inspection is the best thing. When I clicked here, and then I clicked here, and I could see those two images, and I saw the preview, all right? And I saw how similar those are. Now, is it profitable? <laughs> That's another question. Doesn't look profitable to me because this price, all right? Uh, we see on Amazon being lower. So no profit there, all right? Now, 434 products, I hope, there's going to be something profitable uh, out of those products. It's not really a guarantee. But the fastest way to find out is if we get this price data. right? Now, I do have 400 uh, plus products, so it is going to take a while for it to get all of the uh, to get all these matches. I will come back when it's finished, and then I'm going to show you the process of getting the prices and how, it's going to, uh, how we're going to find the profitable products. So at this point, I actually finished matching all of the products. As you can see, of course, there are some products that don't have matches, but most of the products have been matched to an Amazon URL, and this is going all the way from the top to the bottom of the list. Now, at this point, the best thing to do, rather than going through these individually, which is something you could do, but the best thing to do is to get the Amazon prices in here. Now, if you have Keepa and you're subscribed to Keepa Data Features, you're going to go to Keepa Data Product Viewer, and I'll just put the ASINs in there um, and get the data that way, which I will do as well. But uh, if you don't have Keepa, I just want people to be aware of this import XML prices. You can click on that. It will insert an import XML formula, and it will attempt to grab prices from Amazon links. Um, it usually works very well, but there might be certain times when it might not work as well as others, uh, depending on... I imagine it might depend on Google resources. So it might say not found, and then the not found might eventually become a price. So that is really like a slower way to get the prices, but it, it can work. But how well it works might depend, all right, on the situation, uh, the time of day and things like that. But right now, um, what I'm going to do is actually highlight all these ASINs, and I'm going to use Keepa Data Product Viewer instead. So what I'm going to do is highlight these ASINs, all these ASINs. And by the way, you really don't have to click and drag down like this. You can do Control shift down on the keyboard, uh, and that will actually select the whole uh, the continuous data, and then you right-click copy. I kind of hit that on the side by accident. But I'm going to go over to Keepa Data Product Viewer, and where it says List of ASINs, I'm just going to drop the ASINs in there. It also takes UPC codes. But I think I might have... Did I lose my ASINs? Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do... Check this off and load list. And when I see the products, it's going to load the products. They should be like... The, they should look similar. And they should have names that make sense. Right? Meaning they're the same products. So same names we see here. We should be seeing those names here as well. And we do see that. Right? The same Nature's Plus products. Okay. So now I'm going to export, and by the way, I have 297 results out of that. Um, and I'm going to export the results that I do have, which it was able to get 297. And I'm almost, I just want to make sure I really did select all of these. I am downloading that data, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so pretty sure I did. All right. And I just exported this with the export button to the CSV. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the Keepa CSV sheet and bring that Keepa data in here with file import because if I don't, I won't have the data on the sheet to get the prices from and the FBA fees and all of that. And I'm going to do replace current sheet just like I did with that other CSV. All right, same process. There's no mapping that has to be done. The mapping is, I programmed, pre-programmed the mapping 
of the Keepa. So all you have to do is import Keepa data, right? And I can do that because it's one source. It's Keepa, right? So it's pre-programmed. The suppliers, they're all different. So there's no one program I can write that, right? that's just going to... So that's why we have to do the columns map when we do supplier data because different suppliers have a different arrangement of data, okay? But for Keepa, it's always the same. So we just import Keepa data right away and it will import. I'm just going to wait for these to fill in. Now you're going to see the prices and the ranks fill in, but also if you go over to the right, you're going to see the FBA fees are also filling in. Okay? There are going to be some that might be missing. It's possible. Sometimes people cannot get an FBA fee or a price. Sometimes they can't get the rank. Sometimes there is no rank on that product. I've seen products that literally when you open the product list and there's no rank on it. Um, I would think that might be because those products haven't sold. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Or maybe they haven't sold enough. And that's why I often filter those out and keep up when I'm doing uh, research. But that's a whole other thing. Right now, I just want you to see what's happening here. And, you know, as it climbs down, you can see profits being calculated on the side, like estimated profits. You see some of those are going green. So these are the ones where the estimated profit is already coming out to be profitable. Now, of course, it is based on there being an FBA fee. And I know not everyone is doing FBA, but you have to think, even if you're not doing FBA, you're probably going to be doing some kind of shipping. You're gonna, you probably have some kind of shipping cost, so it's still a good calculation to use the FBA fee uh, for your estimated profit. And then, of course, when you do the final calculation on the product, then you adjust it for your, your specific situation, your specific ship shipping, right, or whatever it is that you have. But for estimated profit, using the FBA fee makes sense, right, uh, when looking at estimated profit in bulk. Okay, so we can see these are the current ranks on the products as of now. And again, just I got to wait for this to finish because I need uh, all my results. Okay, I need all my results. And this script is different from the other script because it's not doing searches on the web. It's simply going to the CSV. Well, really what it's doing is putting a formula, okay, uh, these formula that you see up here. And that formula knows how to get the data for this ASIN from the Keepa CSV. All right, so that's what it's doing. It's not doing any kind of web searches. This is not any, you know, kind of, uh, this is not related to anything online. So for that reason, it's able to run straight from beginning to end without stopping. All right, so we see that all the way from beginning to end, we got all of our data in there from Keepa. Now, if I scroll over, I'm going to notice that the green profits, certain profits are green, those are positive, and then the losses are negative, right? And those are the, the kind of like pink, red areas. So basically, even though it's just an estimated profit, it's very likely the a good profit calculation, okay, for the most part. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click on the number five, selecting that whole row, data create a filter to apply a filter da data create a filter and what I'm gonna do is actually click this and this allows me to do filter by color fill color dark green and now I will only see green only the green profits so this way I'm not navigating a bunch of things that are not likely profitable so these are the ones that have the the, high, the estimated profit. I can still look at the ranks if I want to look at those. And then I have the MASH score. MASH score just kind of helps, but it's not a definite thing either. But I, you know, I, I've been sorting Z to A on these because I think it gives me more possibility of finding better matches first. But it's not exact, but it, it's kind of, it, I think it at least helps. Alright, but even though I've done that, I also still want to look at things like ROI, and I want to look at ranks. I want to look kind of look at everything, right? Um, obviously, you want to go for the larger ROIs because you're more likely to have success with those. Okay, so this is ultra 
Linux joint, and then I'm going to open it here on Amazon and see what I get. So here I am. I'm ready to go down the list, manually investigate each result. Now, these very much are very similar in description as far as the title, uh, but this, these are 180, yeah, 180, 180, but it looks like a pack of two. Um, it is Nature's Plus, and I wonder if there's not another picture, just to kind of be sure, or does Amazon have more pictures? The actual box? Okay. Because this is showing the actual bottles where this is not. Yeah, so I have to, you know, I might want to look more at some different details to really make sure. Okay, so you'd want to really look at this and try to uh, determine um, these being the same product. If you have the UPC code, which I don't think, I don't think I do. What I'm going to do is copy this ASIN. I don't want to spend a lot of time on any one product right now in this video, but I am going to go ahead and paste this ASIN. Okay, this, I'm not being given a UPC code that I can even use to help. Yeah, good. Very. I mean, I, I think it's at a glance. I'm thinking this is the same product, maybe. Uh, but anyway, the fact that there's two. Let's say it's the same, right? Let's say I determine these are the same product. The fact that there are two, right? I'm going to have to say two items per ASIN, right? Two. So two of these at this unit price, two of them for each ASIN. So that means that's going to cost me, all right, twice the unit price, right, to buy this product. So now it's not profitable anyway. So even if it is the same product, it's not going to be profitable as a two pack, right? Okay, so I'm just good. I would just move on from this one and I'll move to the next one. Let's see what we get here. And you don't have to go in order the way I am right now. I mean, you don't have to, but you can. All right? And I might see what's going on with this product. And I see another two-pack. And sometimes when you have seen enough products, you can see the profitability or the lack of profitability. Uh, profit, profitability, Or, you know, I can see that these are just not the same. So I'm probably just going to skip those two, right? So I kind of want to get away from that. I keep seeing that same product. I kind of just want to get away from that product. Right, and I want to really try to see if they have a good preview here, because the preview will show me a lot. I do see just one product in the preview, because I really uh, kind of hoping I'll get a, that if the ROI is large. Um, taking a look at this large ROI, right? Uh, let's see what this ROI is: 167 percent. Okay, that's fine. A lot of times the large ROI is because it's a two-pack making it look like it's more expensive on Amazon when really it's because there's two, it's a two-pack, right? So, but in this case, we've got the large ROI report, but then I only saw one item in each picture, but not sure these are really the same. Um, eight ounces, 30 ounces, right? So these are not quite exactly the same product, right? Sometimes... However, you will find that the uh, same product is not far away. It might be just like one link away, and then you can go and kind of update it. This happens a lot, where you'll see another product that looks really that is actually like. See, now that looks like the product right there. See, and I can open this, and now this appears to be the actual product, but I don't think this is going to be profitable. And I can compare, but this is the product. This is it. So if you want, what you can do here is update it. So I'm going to take this link, copy it, and what I'm going to do, because the thing with the system is I don't want people to forget that this is still a spreadsheet. So yes, it's got some automated features, but it doesn't mean you can't, you're not supposed to use it like a spreadsheet. It's a spreadsheet, right? Things still might need to be updated. So this is actually not really the right match here. So I'm actually going to delete this and put in a new one. And I'm going to delete that ASIN, and I could literally just copy paste the ASIN from the Chrome extension, or I can just use get ASINs, and I'll just kind of copy that ASIN. Uh, now, remember, this ASIN, we're not going to have an automatic price because we never got it from, it was never put into Keepa. What I would like to do right now, however, and I should have done this maybe right after the Keepa thing, 
click on stamp Amazon data uh, removing the formulas from the keeper prices in the rank because I need it to just be solid data right now I don't want the formulas right now okay uh, I don't need them anymore I got the data I needed and I want to get rid of the formulas so that I can copy this data later with the export so what I want to do now this I mean you're updating it so it's just gonna have to be manual but if you put in 947 I keep going to the wrong tool let me get that out the way if I put 947, 947 for the Amazon price, I'm not even thinking about the rank at this moment. I'm just look, looking at this uh, profit and whether it's going to be profitable. And then I've got no FBA fee. Now, if you have Sell Assistant app, it's showing you the FBA fee, right? Uh, here, 377. Now, if you don't have Sell Assistant app, you're going to have to use the FBA calculator, drop the ASIN in, search, and then hit the uh, it's like an estimate button that you have to hit. And you can get it that way, but uh, hopefully, if you have the Chrome extension, it's going to be a lot easier. All right, 377. I've got again. Uh, you can use my link and get a deal on the Chrome extension, and it, it's an inexpensive, uh, very inex very inexpensive uh, monthly cost. Okay, very low uh, Chrome extension cost. All right, probably the lowest you'll get for e-commerce software. Um, and does so much. That's the thing about it that I like. Um, so, you know, this is really it, right? So, really, you know, with large ROIs, a lot of times being a two pack, but not always, but can be. That's something you might want to look out for. Look out for as you go through this. Uh, use the previews, right? You definitely use the previews, uh, and don't assume that uh, because of a certain match score whether or not it's going to match because you still have to look because sometimes there are other reasons for the match score right and I'm going to close that so like this one I might want to compare this to that uh, okay but I don't think I'm not sure if it's just that this is in a box and this is not in a box 90 tablets, 90 500 IU, 90 Chubble. No, I think this is something different. Okay, so that's basically, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's still a process. This is still a process. Um, even source of software, no one can replace the final judgment of a human being as yet with the software. Um, so what happens is, yeah, source of software throws a bunch of choices at you and products, and you still find yourself sitting there making sure that they're really uh, correct, right? So this is gonna save you some time, but it's not gonna prevent you from having to do this work, all right? So uh, if you can um, afford to hire, hire, you hire maybe someone else to do it as well to kind of go through these products uh, maybe split the work up or however it is you need to get it done or you take your time and you say well I'm going to check 20 of these a day you know however you do it right and I'm just going down the list right now and normally uh, what I might suggest is that you do some kind of notes so basically as you go down what you can do you don't really need the match score it's not really like a very important thing it's just kind of an approximated score so you can delete that and put something else in its place to let you know that you've already looked at that product. Because once you've looked at it and tried to determine if it's a match, the match score is really meaningless at that point. All right? It's just something to gravitate towards in the beginning. Okay, 60 tablets, and this is also 60. All right? This is just up closer. 600 milligrams, 60 vegan. Milligrams, rice, herbal, red yeast. All right, I'm really looking. Okay, yeah, so these really appear to be the same. I even have a model number on this, but um, I don't believe Vitacost is really providing, you know, that number, unless I just haven't really taken my time to see it. But I don't see that there's, a like, a model number being provided here. They have a SKU, but that SKU could just be their own SKU, or it could, the SKU could be, or the... The whoever made the list and might have might be using that skew, so I, I don't know. 
we have to see but I do see 097 and I see that here as well yeah okay so I see some similarity there but you know hard to be sometimes 100% sure um, Easy to swallow, but they seem very similar, right? But not really sure. I might even take the UPC. I don't have approval to sell it anyway, but but just as an example, you might I got a you know twenty four percent ROI here, and I'm hoping that these are the same because you know everything is an estimation, but it's not until you get to the product uh, that you can really say. Okay, we've got a thirty ounce, and I'm going to see if it's a thirty ounce and uh, twenty five twenty five. Right, but not enough of a price difference. Right now, honestly, I do have to say that uh, with a brand like this, these kind of brands that are not a private brand of the supplier, it's a lot more challenging to find a profitable product if you're just looking within that brand because it's not private, which means people can get the product cheaper somewhere else and then they can turn and sell it on Amazon. So when we see people selling the product at a price that's low, you might say, Well, how can they be making a profit? Well, they're not buying it quite possibly from and as you see some of the people's prices are high because they probably are trying to arbitrage it and now they've been you know undercut by other people and who really knows why other people are charging so cheap sometimes they might just be trying to get rid of the product their inventory we don't really know why they're so cheap but they could be getting it cheaper somewhere else so this is something to keep in mind you know the brand is not private which means people can easily get the product other places uh, if they do their research or they might be doing wholesale and so that is why we like private brands it's going to be easier uh, to compete and find uh, profitable products but it doesn't mean you cannot find a profitable product uh, amongst these brands um, you can but what you need to find is a market inconsistency as it's called meaning that for some reason the market price of that product on Amazon is just a lot higher uh, than what that product typically costs at the supplier and those price differences do exist right it's just not that easy to come across right so here which is part of the reason why I created a system like this right you know to try to make that process a little easier but then we have stuff like this 180 tablets here but then only 90 you know things like that right so there are all these kind of um, different things that we have to sort through so you're gonna have to really go through a lot of products Sometimes it really depends on the supplier, depends on the brand, depends on that category um, or whatever. And this is why often I actually don't do a brand based with this system. What I do is I do categories um, and I just check the category. But I thought it might be interesting to try uh, doing it by brand as well, um, which you can do as well. And of course, if I go through enough of these, uh, I can potentially eventually find profitable products, but they are just so many for me to go through right now here in this video so um what i will do is either i will i will go through uh as many as i think i can go through that makes sense to go through and see uh what i find and that is just you know something i'll have to do um if i want to find profitable products this way or I will have to pass it off using some other kind of service where I have uh, human beings check the products for me and tell me which match right uh, and basically that would be the other choice so anyway that's basically it you will have to go through the process but this is just one example with one particular brand the many different brands you can try categories also not just brands the purpose of this video however was really to focus on a brands based kind of research process and this was the brand I just kind of randomly chose to work with uh, in this video but you can see the process of a brands based uh, product research so hopefully you found uh, this video to be helpful and if you're not currently using this tool you can go ahead and get a copy of this tool I have a link for you to get a copy of this Google Sheet system I think it can at least help you uh, in the process of your product research it is not however magic you do have to still do some investigation like I was doing in the beginning check your brands check things like that you know check out your supplier maybe they have a private brand where it's gonna be easier to profit maybe you know certain categories on the supplier are gonna be better than other categories we have to investigate sometimes then you can scan the better choice that's gonna give you better results and bring it into the system and the system's gonna help you navigate 
through the matches and the links and things like that so you don't have to do everything manually so still a manual process with the system but it's allowing you to pull uh, larger amounts of data together uh, on the supplier and the Amazon side together in one place a bit more quickly in a more organized way and that is pretty much the purpose of the system so this is the most up-to-date version as of today uh, April 8th 2022 version 3.0 as I've made some significant changes uh, in the structure meaning that I added a few things model number match score rank and uh, because I've added those things also uh, I forgot to mention export all data when you click export all data that's going to send all of the data uh, that you have currently filtered out here into a new sheet. Now, I think I might have had something here already, so I'm going to go back and clear uh, my export data first. And let's get this button out the way. And I've cleared my export sheet. And then what I'm going to do is click on Export All Data. And it's going to take all this data and like copy it to an export sheet. And this is where now I have uh, all the data. Make sure you stamp the Amazon data before you do this. And now everything that was on that sheet is over here. And from here, if you want, you can take this export sheet and duplicate it or copy it to a new spreadsheet. Uh, just copy it to a new spreadsheet, open that spreadsheet, and now you have a new sheet with that data. Uh, these links will still work. The supplier link to the product, the Google link, the Amazon link, the formula is still there. The profit formulas are still there. The profit formulas will still work. You can plug in and change things uh, and get different profit shipping or whatever. You know, you still get your profit calculation, your ROI. The formulas are still all in there. And uh, you can share this with someone else, maybe your team or whoever is going to be working on uh, navigating these products. And that is pretty much um, a summary of this whole process. So hopefully you find this useful. Uh, you check the video for links. And then if you want to contact me, you can do that as well. Get the system. Uh, it's Mr. Mark Excel for Amazon. Look forward to hearing from you. Seeing you around in another video.